Hi guys, it's Sophie. So I'm going to do a video that was actually requested a little while ago um, and I don't think I've ever done one of these before but it's like a, it's like an on my shelf tag kind of thing um, just to chat about a few books that I don't think I've talked about on booktube before um, kind of pre-booktube books so all I did was I numbered my shelves and counted approximately how many books I had on each shelf and I've just chosen five books that are sort of random from my shelves just to chat through with you today um, so hopefully you enjoy this if this is the kind of thing you'd like to see again then I may be able to accommodate this I know it's vlogmas and I'm obviously posting a lot um, so let me know um, and if you do have any suggestions then chuck them down below um, but yeah I thought this could be fun um, so hopefully you enjoy the first one that I wanted to talk about was Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Now, it's no surprise that Stephen King has come in here considering the volume of Stephen King books that I own, um, but Pet Cemetery was the first Stephen King book that I ever read, um, and this is like what kicked that love off. It's also like, it, it actually has a bit of a nasty spine, I don't know if you can see it. It looks fine on camera, it's light. <laughs> um, but yeah, I read this book an awfully long time ago and it just, I just fell in love with his work, I think. Um, this particular book is about um, undead animals, kind of. Um, it's just creepy, but, but all the characters, I remember feeling like they were so strong in my mind. And the very beginning of this book, st I can still remember like the scene. Um, and I think that means a lot, considering I've read this five years ago. Um, I would love to have a reread of this book soon, though. I think this is one that I normally recommend people when starting out with Stephen King. So. I recommend his shorter books. So this is relatively short for a Stephen King. It's, it's 460 pages, but this is a teeny tiny edition. So like, here's like an average sized book and here's the Stephen King. So um, yeah, I, I mean, I think this is a good place to start. I tend to recommend this one or Carrie um, because I think Carrie's a brilliant place to start as well. Um, but it's just so readable. And, and I think, you know, it's very similar to Salem's Lot. It's, it's very much like that kind of King, if that's the kind of stuff you enjoy. Um, really creepy stays with me um yeah and I, I really need to reread this book i think this event may make me want to like reread all the books i'm going to talk about and the next one i'm sure you saw as i did my size uh, comparison but it's jellyfish by janice galloway now i know i have talked about this one whilst on booktube um but for the sake of truly random pickings i thought i should really have a chat about it here the cover itself is beautiful like it's one of my favorite covers it's still standing face out like since i've read it and normally i change stuff around fairly often um, I really love this. It's a collection of short stories that are all very strange. Um, they, they range in, in how effective they are, I think. I think the first story is actually really weak. Um, and I saw Chbosky read this as part of her try story tag, I think. And she was quite, she was sort of kind of fairly interested, but the short story at the beginning, I think, is much weaker than some of the others in the collection. And I wasn't bowled away by the first one, but overall, I absolutely love this collection. Um, I've reread a couple of the stories in here a few times since, just because like, they stuck out in my head and I wanted to just kind of re-experience them. Um, and it has some elements of that like, creepy motherhood, which is a, a thing I, I love in writing, um, where there's there's like this, this strange um, sort of, of daughter-mother bond. Um, I just it's some I don't know it's something kind of fairy tale esque about it though this isn't a kind of fairy tale collection, um, and they are all kind of slightly nautical just in the sort of feel around them. Um, although not all the stories are set sort of around around the sea or with characters who um, have a strong link to the sea, there there is a sense of sort of the closeness of the ocean. Um, yeah, I just I really loved it. I I've read about this a fair amount after I read it. Um, I don't remember how much I spoke about on booktube, but, but yeah, I mean, I really love it. I've reread stories in it since um, and would definitely recommend this one. The next one I really wasn't so keen on. I did read these, at least some of these, at the very beginning of booktube, but probably it's been a while since um, since then. Um, and it was Wool, the Wool Trilogy by Hugh Howie. Now, don't get me wrong, the book itself is gorgeous and all three of them are absolutely stunning. This is a sci-fi trilogy about... Um, a world where all the inhabitants live within these sort of great silos um, and the world outside is toxic or poisoned or dangerous or radioactive or something and they all can't leave and that they sort of live and work and exist only within this very limited space um, and it's about a group of individuals the whole sort of trilogy is about a group of individuals who are kind of challenging the status quo challenging the, the idea that maybe you don't go outside um, challenging the systems within the silo within the sort of society. I remember them quite well, which as you can kind of tell, like it's been probably a year and a half since I read these. Um, 
and I think that parts of the story are really strong but for me I really just found the trilogy dragged on. Um, Wool I loved and I read Wool really quickly but then Shift and Dust which are the other two from memory um, I was just less and less interested in, in as I went through. Um, I kind of felt as though I wanted a resolution quicker and I don't know whether that's because I tend to read single books rather than, than series um, but it just felt somewhat unfulfilling for me. Um, I, I think some people do like this though. If you do like it then let me know down below sort of what your thoughts were because um, I can't remember there was too much of a conversation when I first spoke about it. And the next one um, I am 90% sure I've already talked about but you know what I love it and I have no issue with talking about it again. That is One of Us by Asne Sternestad and this is the story of um, sort of Anders Breivik and really his victims and I think this as a true crime novel, novel, book, <laughs> one of the things I enjoyed about it most um, is that it doesn't focus exclusively on Breivik and it, it really speaks a lot about who his victims were and what they stood for and who, what their lives were and um, I, I cried a fair few times reading this book um, because the people were so brave, the kids are so brave um, and, and I think he really the author does a brilliant job of putting you in the place of those children and as horrifying as that is for a reader I think it's really really important um, and I, I, you know, I read true crime not because it glorifies the, the killers but because I think you can learn lessons from it and um, I think you can understand things that you might not want to read about sometimes but I, I don't know I think this this focused so beautifully on the children um, whilst giving you the information you needed about Brevivik to understand the motives and, and his his sort of sickness and yeah I mean I was, I'm actually I'm gonna make a video soon about true crime and some recommendations for you guys in true crime because that's a video that's been requested before and I've shied away a little bit um, it's because there's so much I'd love to talk about and I never have time um, but this would have almost certainly been in that top five um, if I hadn't have spoken about it today just because I don't want to sort of repeat myself too too close to one another um, but yeah it, it has that element that I love about true crime, good true crime um, where it isn't a horror story it, it's really tragic um, and if that sounds like it's your kind of thing, then um, it, you know it's a fairly hefty book, but it is it is really good. I think the, the back of it as well gives you an idea about how bloody sad it is. Um, it says she ran up the hill through the moss. Her Wellington sank into the wet earth. The forest floor squelched beneath her feet. She had seen him fire and a boy fall. We shan't die today, girls, she said to her companions. We won't die today. It's it's so sad. Like I. To be honest, like, I think I cried into the first chapter, um, but yeah, I'm going to stop blathering now, but it's well worth a read, um, even if true crime isn't your normal bag, um, you know, I think it's important that we read stuff like this every now and again. And then the very last one I have to talk to you about today is Sex Criminals Volume 1 by Matt Fraction and Chip Dzarsky. Um This is a graphic novel um, in which a couple stop time when they orgasm, which is very strange. Um, I didn't get on with this at all, I think I only got the first, yeah, I only bought the first edition, I borrowed the second one from the library, um, just to see if it, it kind of went anywhere, um, it's, it's very strange, like, I don't mind reading about sex, I don't mind, um, it's sort of being discussed, I don't mind seeing drawings of it, it doesn't really bother me, um, but it just felt, I didn't feel that there was much to it, um, and I think at least with like superhero stuff, you have to at least want the superpower. <laughs> and I think this would kind of suck. Like, yeah, it's fine, but the, you know, the, the, the idea is it's only with like certain people, so you'd be trapped with that person. Like, that could go so badly wrong. I don't know. I I don't know. I just really didn't love it. Um, I know some people have really enjoyed it. It says on the back that it was um, the comic of the year from Time Magazine. So clearly, other people enjoy it a bit more than I do. Um, I really can't say I recommend this one. Um, I think. It could have either been funny or an interesting like take on sex, and I don't think it was either. So hopefully you've enjoyed hearing me chat a little bit about some books that you might not otherwise have heard me talk about on the channel. Um, and as I say, let me know down below if this is something you'd like to see me do again, because it's a fairly sort of easy video to be able to put out in Vlogmas, and I'm trying to think of ideas and stuff to give you guys in this time. Um, Hopefully you're enjoying Vlogmas so far, it's hard work um, for creators and um, even today's like today where I'm doing a couple of videos in a more sort of chilled out fashion, um, it still means, you know, filming until like 9 o'clock at night so uh, I really hope that you guys are enjoying it and that you're having a really nice run up to Christmas. Um, I'll see you tomorrow in my next Vlogmas video.
Bye bye.